Hello, and welcome to another episode of Between Knits and Pearls. This is a special episode as I am your host, Emily, also known as Anders Mill Knits on Instagram and Ravelry, and I am all by my lonesome. My co-host, Stephanie, or Farmstead Knits, as she is known online, is uh, very invested in the Easter weekend and celebrating with her kiddos. By the way, Happy Easter Eve. This is, I'm recording this on Saturday, but it won't come out till Sunday. So happy Easter day for those of you there. Um, and so she's very engaged in that and I did not want to interrupt that at all. It's a very special time of year and everything, but I also wanted to keep our schedule going. And so I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna do a solo today. And also the, the, my lovely friend that we were going to have on here uh, to interview today came down ill and so she w had to cancel at the last minute and she felt so bad about it. But hello, life happens. And if you're ill, you know, take care of yourself. Self-care, right guys? Pot calling kettle because a couple weeks back when we, uh, no, a couple, well, about a month or so back when we interviewed Boston Jen Knits, I had a migraine and I still went forward with recording. <laughs> just am not smart in that way. I gotta live what I preach. Okay. So that's to the rest of things, how you can find us. So I have an audio podcast called Little Cabin Knits, and you can find that on all the major podcasting stream network things like uh, Apple Podcast and Stitcher. I use the podcatcher called Overcast, and that usually, I kind of track how quickly you can find my podcast once I upload it onto my server from my Overcast app. And within like 10 minutes of me putting it onto my server, it's out to Overcast. So I'm pretty sure that it gets out there pretty quickly to everybody else. Now, I in, I record the audio po podcast every other week as we do with this video podcast. So I switch between video and audio. Every week I'm producing something, but it just depends on what format is um, scheduled for that week. Now, uh, you can also find us on the interwebs as andersmillknits.wix.co and that should be going across your screen now and on there you can find all of our postings about things pretty soon we've got some really exciting things coming like super exciting things coming and um, I have plans in there to make a whole page about like products we love and that we uh, feel comfortable putting our names behind super excited about doing that it's just finding the time, you know? Then in addition to that, you can find us on Facebook. We have a public group called Between Knits and Pearls. So if you just put that into the group search engine on Facebook, you can find us there. Now I know Facebook isn't for everybody. I also know Ravelry isn't for everybody. And yes, we have Ravelry groups as well. So we have the Anders Mill Knits Ravelry group and we have the Between Knits and Pearls Ravelry group. And so, it's just like pick your poison. Like, do you, I mean, not poison. That's a terrible thing to say. But if you want to engage with us here, comment and subscribe and like and share below. If you want to engage with us on Facebook, feel free to do that. If you want to engage with us on our website, there's means to do that. You can message us and we have a forum thing, which I've never used, even though I set it up <laughs> on there. You can email us at betweenknitsandpearls at gmail.com if you want to do a private conversation. Let's see, on Ravelry, we have lots of um, discussions going on, especially because our signups for the Happy Everything and Merry in July swap, the signups are about to go live. And so people are gearing up for that and we're getting really excited for that. And so that you can just, or you can message us on Instagram. Both Steph and I are very active on Instagram. So actually I'm way more active on Instagram than any other platform. I'm terrible at checking my, my emails. I'm terrible at checking my messages on Ravelry. And it's just been interesting. Now, we just came off of a three-day blackout from Ravelry. You know, if you wanted to protest the changes that Ravelry is making permanent, I think it was as of April 1st, 
you in solidarity, we refuse to go on Ravelry for three days. Now, I was curious about just how that would look and if we weren't going on Ravelry. So I might have cheated on Friday. I did for just a second. I went on there for just a quick blip to check how many active users was were on Ravelry at that time, and it was less than 3,000. Now think about that because we have, oh my gosh, we have well over 100,000 users of Ravelry at this time, and less than 3,000 of them were active. And so, and I quickly logged back out and I was just like, okay, I think this might hopefully be getting a point across. So, you know, I was just doing a little fact checking mission, whatever, reconnaissance, just to kind of figure things out. But I'm with you. I, I am subject to migraines and I am not, for some odd reason, the, the Ravelry platform as now stands is not actually triggering my migraines. However, I can easily see how it's triggering other people's as well as, what was the other thing? Seizures. That was the other thing. So I wanted to put in my support for everybody else. Plus, I just really love the original retro, if you will, Ravelry style. I just, I don't see why that was bad. It was lovely. I just, I don't know. I understood it well. It was great. Anywho, so we came off of that. And what was really nice is that today, if I hadn't been getting geared up to record this podcast, I don't think I would have gone on Ravelry then either because there's so many other platforms that are out there now. So for just a moment, I want to talk about some of the things that people are, the alternatives that people are finding. Now, I don't know very many of them, but I'm going to talk about some of them. Where's my phone? Here it is. So some of you know, and I, and I hope that you might be um, joining in on this. There is a group a, a make-along called the Uplift Make-Along. And I'm sorry that I'm showing other people there. There we go. Now, this one is not really being held on Ravelry. It's only being held on Instagram and a new platform that I did not know about. And it's honestly not new because I went and looked and it's been around for a while, but it's super awesome. It's called the Mighty Networks. And so it's, it's got the ability to have forum posts, you've got ability to share photos, but it's all based on groups. So if you join a group, you create a, a particular profile with your own image or whatever you want to put in that group for that group. If you want to join another group, you create your whole profile all over again, specialized towards the new group that you're joining. I really liked that. Uh, so I joined in there and I've been having so much fun. There is, so, I mean, like I've got, I, I, I checked it this morning and I uh, went through the messages and read all the messages and already, again, I've got 36 new messages. So it's being very active on there. I'm so excited about that. Another one that some uh, podcasters, YouTubers are using is, um, is it called Script? Or is it Slack? I think it's Slack. Let me double check. Yes. So, um, th this one is on Slack. If you can see that. And she's got, I mean, it's great. She's got a weekly, um, video chat, uh, in there for those of you who want to join in. It's really awesome. And so, and it's, and it's, it's like unto the mighty networks that I just mentioned. And then of course there's discord. Now I know I have the app Discord on here somewhere, but I can't find it at the moment, so I'm not gonna keep searching. But Discord was started for gamers. And it was a way for gamers to chat, a lot of the times live. And it really helped, I mean, it really brought that community together in a, an amazing way. Well, Knitter started figuring this out too. And we were like, you know what? We could chat on Discord too. So I know there's at least one audio, po no, YouTube podcaster that has a group on Discord. I just can't remember what it is at the moment, so I apologize. So then there's also other other platforms that are starting up. Oh no, I think I got off of them. But there are a lot of other online 
platforms that are starting up to try and meet the need for us to still have a community and have access to patterns um, without having to go on Ravelry, if that is your choice. I'm invested heavily in Ravelry. I've been on it since almost the beginning. I think it was less than a year into it when I joined. And I have a very low member number. I can't remember what it was. And I remember at one time when we got to the 100,000 member mark, everybody was like, I'm member number, blah, blah, blah. I'm so excited. I've been here for so long. It's so great. But the enthusiasm behind it has changed. And it's you. It is mainly because of politics, if you will, and our social awareness movement, as well as the interface that they're using. There's so many layers going on here. So I just want to encourage you, if you want to continue using Ravelry, I'm going to continue using it uh, because I'm so heavily invested in it. And, but there's other places. I swear Lovecrafts has something. And I'm, it's driving me bippy that I can't remember if that's correct. And I don't want to waste our time by me searching for it. But there are lots of other ones. And if you guys know of a way for us to connect I think I've already said this, but put it down below. That'd be really awesome. I was so excited about Mighty Networks that I actually started a Between Knits and Pearls group, but I haven't finished setting it up yet. So that might come. I mean, I don't want to muddy the waters with so many different avenues for us to connect and chat on. I really don't think that that's a wise thing to do. But, you know, I drank the Kool-Aid yesterday with this app. <laughs> So in my excitement, I was like, dude, I'm totally going to make one. But, you know, we'll see. Um, so like I, like I said, I, I wasn't able to meet today with my peeps, with Stephanie or our my friend that was going to join us for the interview. So I thought to myself, well, let me take some time right now to just talk about our year-long cow called the Plan Knit Cow. Now which is K-A-L for knit along. Now the plan knit cow, we're not actually knitting. It's kind of more like an organization along, you know, because the goal of this is to really just, as we're home more and we are in our living environments way more than we are used to, let's take this time to organize ourselves and organize our crafts. Now, the first three months of the Plan Knit Cow was uh, January, February, and March. And during that time, we organized our yarn stash. And I dived headlong into this. Now, my counterpart, Stephanie, already is well organized and had all of her yarns already cataloged into Ravelry and everything. Um, and so she was golden. But I, on the other hand, had not updated my stash in six years, I think it was, since like 2014. So, and also when I was making things, I wasn't actually updating my stash to say that it was gone <laughs> or used. So it was so incredibly out of date. So I took the opportunity to go ahead and just put everything into Ravelry. I took pictures of it. I listed the prices of, of things and I just took over the house for the whole month of January. And you'll find a video down in our, our list of video catalog here on YouTube of the Instagram stories that I recorded during that time. I compiled them all together and put them up on, on YouTube of my journey for, for that portion of it. But it looks like me just grabbing all of my yarns from every nook and cranny around the house, whether they were in tubs or not. And I categorize them by weight and then I categorize them by color as well really only the fingering weight because that's the majority of my stash and I found that just organizing it by weight my fingering weight was still unorganized by by in my opinion because I like color families so I organize things a step further at least for the fingering weight now some colors just wouldn't, some color rays just would not align with any one color. Like if they were very highly variegated, I actually put a separate bin for just the highly va variegated fingering weight. 
that's been very useful. It's been really fun to see all my highly var variegated stuff, but it's also been really fun to see my semi-solids, my speckled yarn, my lightly variegated, <sighs> my commercial versus hand-dyed yarns, just all mixing in and making a big happy family. I just really liked it. And the relief of having that finally organized to now know what I have ha has just been so relieving. It's just amazing, guys. Amazing. So now for the months of April, May, and June, uh, we are focusing on our pattern library. Now that can look like a myriad of different things. So we could, well, as in like the way you could do it. Now I made a couple, I made a list and I organized it via paper versus digital. And um, that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Now the, the, these ideas are according to Emily. If you have a, an idea of how to organize our, your paper library or your pattern library, please comment below because I would love to hear about it um, because I've got both paper copies of patterns, which I'll show you in a moment, and digital copies of, of things. Now my digital library is quite a lot larger, like by the thousands than my paper library, but still I'm kind of having to do both styles of organizing via paper and digital. So here's the ideas that I've come up with, okay? So one of them has already been done for me. Now this right here, this is just one of three binders. Now look how thick this binder is in. This is just one of three binders that my good friends from my knitting group back in Portland created for me and gave me when I moved back to Anchorage. And inside here is every single, up to the point that I left, I forgot about, oh shoot, it's come undone. So it's gonna be hard for me to turn the pages. Hold on a second, let me try and fix this. But inside here is pretty much every single pattern of Socks That Rock up to, I believe, 2018 when I left. And so I have every single pattern. Okay, I'm just not gonna mess with those because it's, okay. And I have got some minis that my friends gave me of some of the uh, colorways that were specially dyed up for the Socks That Rock so like, here's one of my minis that I have. Can you see it? There we go. And this is the colorway emergency. Oh wait, this is just called emergency sock yarn. Don't leave home without it. That's just what they call it. And my friends, here's some that are not hooked into the, yeah, this is just three of the ones that are not hooked into the binder at the moment because my binder apparently got a little banged up. And so I need to organize things a little bit. So see, I've already got something I need to do, but I just love these. These are so great and they're all different colors and some of them are semi-solids. Well, technically this one's a little variegated. I don't know if you can see, but it's got some reds and in, in dispersed with the blacks, but I mean, it's gorgeous. And then this one is definitely a semi-solid. Um, but then this one's a highly variegated one. Like where would I have put this if when I was organizing my yarn, right? So that had to have gone if I had this skein, which this looks so familiar. I don't know which skein colorway this is, but I love it. Kind of want a whole skein of it if I don't have it. But this would have gone into my highly variegated bin. So inside here, let me get rid of the loose hanging stuff. Inside here, we have the patterns laid out most of them are in protective sleeves but some of them are loose like this and we've got the hand dyed notes we got the letters that go along with every single month and then the pattern that follows and it's just it tells such a beautiful story i just absolutely love this uh and so anyway my friends gave me this, I've got three of those. Now this is one way you can organize your patterns. So my thought process was, okay, if we're gonna do it in binders, how would we do it? Now you might differ in this, but my thought process is, is you could do it in a 
quite a few different ways. You could just do it in alphabetical order of the name of the patterns. You could do it by type. So if it was a sweater, you would do a sweater binder. If it was socks, you would do a sock binder. Same with hats, shawls, etc. Which on and then inside that, you might do that alphabetically. Now that's what I'm leaning towards. I really like that idea. I mean, my organization brain, which technically is not really that organized, but you know, when I get going on something, I'm just like, "Oh, that's how I want to do it." And then I get exhausted. But that's some of the ways you can do it. Now, I also have a file folder that I did not bring out of patterns that I've already knit that I printed out. And that's another way that you can organize things. You can just use a file folder system. Again, you don't have to use a binder. You can just have your patterns in a file folder system. Again, according to your style, alphabetically by, by pattern type, I guess we want to call it and do it that way. Um, and then of course, you know, I, so maybe I would even create a binder for my finished, for my completed patterns, as in like I've knit the pattern, which I actually really like that idea too. Cause maybe, cause you know how you always, if you print out a pattern, you write little notes on there that you want to remember if you ever knit this again. But then if I don't remember, I will throw away that pattern when I'm done. And then when I want to knit it again, what the heck was I supposed to remember? Now, granted, you can write that in your project notes on Ravelry, but I'm terrible at that. So I'm more likely to write a note on a pattern and then completely forget it. So like for instance, with my marshland sweater that I'm knitting for Jeremy, I have made quite a few alterations just in the color work section alone and, and things like that, that I wanna be able to remember that I did that. Not that I'm ever gonna knit it again for Jeremy, but I have an idea to knit a dog sweater for Watson, uh, um, jiving off of, or whatever you wanna call it, from the Marshland sweater. Like, I love this idea so much. I don't know if it will happen, but I think I'm gonna have enough yarn left over from his sweater to do it, so maybe, maybe. Finally, the last one that I thought about was that you could organize your patterns, pattern library, with the yarn that you're going to be using, which of course this one example that I was going to use doesn't have it. But you can organize it by putting the pattern in, with a, in a project bag or Ziploc bag with the yarn you want to use with that pattern. So if I was knitting a sweater in the future, and I have a few of those in my stash where I've bought kits that came with a printed out pattern, I just leave the pattern in with the kit. So when it comes time for me to, to knit that kit up, I don't have to go searching everywhere for things. It's all just right there, which I really like. But at the same time, I don't want to necessarily do that with my entire stash because I change my mind all the time about what yarns I want to use for what. Uh, like recently today, I was thinking about knitting a um, ranunculus sweater for my sister. And so I thought about using this yarn that I ripped out of a different project. I know it looks messy, but I was just like, apparently if you knit it in fingering weight and the short sleeve version, and my sister is tiny, like tiny. Um, but apparently you can knit that out of one skein of yarn. Of fingering weight. So I was like, mm -hmm, maybe I'll do that. But see, that literally just came to me today. So I don't really like the idea of organizing my patterns according to, to like matching them up with the yarn physically. Now, this leads me into digital. So I'll start off with because most of the digital is really on Ravelry, but this is how I'll start off. On Ravelry, if you put a pattern in your queue, whether you own the pattern or not, you can link it to the yarn in your stash that you want to use with that. So I have done that. Uh, there's quite a few sweaters in my uh, pattern library on Ravelry that I have pre said, okay, I want to knit this sweater with this yarn. And I'm okay with that. That one I'm okay with. It's all good. I just, for some odd reason, the actual physically of printing out the pattern and making a project bag or Ziploc bag with the yarn and the pattern in it, 
I don't know, on my own. I don't know, I just have this blockage for it. Anyway, so that's one way. So let's talk about the ways that you can organize your stash on Ravelry. There aren't very many because Ravelry aggregates for you when you, pu when you purchase a pattern, whether it's free or otherwise, and you put it in your library, uh, the tags that the designer created for that pattern automatically will be brought into your library. And so Ravelry will then sort it according to those tags by the designer. So, but I believe you can also make your own groups in there. I've never done it, but I'm told that you can. Um, also, you can, so if, for instance, if I was to go into my library and I just put up in the search engine bar, socks, all the socks that have been tagged by the designers as socks would pop up for me. But... What I've learned is, is that not all designers use this feature. And so quite a few of my patterns will not pop up when I put that, that topic into the search engine. So just something to be aware of. Another way that you can do it is when you put a pattern into, so let's say you have a whole bunch of patterns in your library and now you wanna organize them according to what you're going to knit and when, okay? So you can create a queue of things you want to knit and it can be as long or as short as you want. Currently my queue is well over a hundred, probably more like 200 at this moment. Um, in fact, let me just take a look. Um, how many things are in my queue? So I have the ranunculus sweater up and then let's see here, queue. So currently I have 168 items in my queue. The very first thing on my list is my York sleeveless cardigan. Now I bought this as a kit from Lion Brand and I know I wanna knit this or crochet this for the summer. It came as a kit, the pattern stayed with the kit. It's all ready to go, right? But then my next sweater, which see now I'm already saying, I don't know if I wanna knit this one is Claire, I think it's called, no, Ciara, Ciara by Lauren Ayler. That one I haven't actually said that what ones I wanna knit with it. Now it lists out things I could knit with it because it says it was knit with Knit Pick Sport. I'm not really sure that I have any Knit Pick Sport in my queue, in my, in my thing. But, oh, I got this kit too, guys, from, um, No, I can't remember what it's called. The Online Learning Center. Hold on a second. I apologize about that. My dog was being a bad boy. I had to take care of that. Now, we were talking about our cues in, in our library, in a Ravelry library. So whether you have a kit, so you can, in your queue, you can align things with what you, see, look here. It says calls for, and what I'll use. Isn't that fun? It's interesting too. So, see, and it even has my little note right there. Kit from, bought from Crafty, pattern is with the yarn. See, has my notes and everything. That's great. See, and that's number four on my queue. Um, so, you, and so in my head, I'm like, okay, these are the order that I wanna knit in, but <laughs> I'm a magpie and I, like I'm a cat that likes shiny objects and like every 10 seconds I'm coming up with new things. Like for instance, I really, really, really want to knit the faded rose blanket by Sh Cherry Heart next. That's not on my queue. But if I go and organize my queue within, within Ravelry, I can make it on my queue, right? and um, assign it to the yarn if I have yarn already picked out, which I don't really. So the next way that you can do it, and one way that I've started doing, um, but I need to go back and update already, is downloading all of your patterns off of Ravelry 
So you can do this and have them as a digital file on your computer or your external hard drive. I have it on my external hard drive because it's a lot. <laughs> so in fact, let me just look and see how many, how many things are in my library at this moment. It's loading. Um, well, I've got well over 50 pages. I've got well over 50 pages of patterns in my library, but it doesn't tell me how many things are in my library. So let's, let's give you an example of searching for something in Ravelry. Now I just put in the word socks into the search engine and I'm going to press search. And these are the socks that come up because the designer tagged them. Now these are all in my library. Now, what the heck is that? Well, okay, that's an ebook, so there must be a sock within the ebook, right? But see, I can go and look here, but I guarantee you not all my socks are listed, and sock patterns are listed in there. Look at that Intarja sock. Oh my gosh, right? Arrgh. What in so many things. Anyway, I have started downloading all of my patterns off of Ravelry. It's all in a huge mess inside my external external hard drive because I was too impatient when I was downloading them to actually organize them. So now I've got to go back and organize them. Now, how am I going to organize them? I, it? Like automatically it'll organize it by um, alphabetical order in my, in my, you know, in my external hard drive. However, I want to organize it by type. So I would make a file folder for on my computer for sweaters, for socks, and I want to put them in the, the, the correct folder. So that's going to take me a little while. So these are just some ideas that you could do on your own. Now, you can do all of this by hand as well. So when I was talking about your Ravelry queue, you could make, you can hand write your own queue. You don't have to have Ravelry to make up your cue of what you'll knit and when. Who said they were the, the gods of uh, all things knitting and things like that? You can make your own. So what I'm trying to get at is you taking full advantage and full control over your crafting endeavors. And that means... Um, knowing that you have the power to dictate not only what comes into your stash, what comes into your pattern library, but when you knit them, right? For who you knit them, why you knit them, what yarn you use with them, what needles you use, you have the power. You have the control over all of this because this is your craft. So that's really what the Plan Knit Cal is all about is really gaining back, taking control of all of these things. And it's really been wonderful for me because like I said, I'm a magpie, I'm, I'm really distracted by shiny things, but it's also really helping me to contemplate what I want knit-wise in my life. And right now, I really want sweaters. Although there's a few shawls that I've been wanting to knit for a long time. And blankets. Okay, who am I kidding? <laughs> I want everything in my library. But it's honestly become more of, I get to choose. I get to choose when I start these, how much energy I put these things into. Um, and like when I get it done, it's been really empowering in that way. That awareness and focus that I've been putting into it. Now, this year has been a, my year, word for the year has always been, has been focus, I believe. I can't even remember my own word, but I know it is awareness, being aware of what I, I do, what I put into, what energy I put into everything. And so I'm really striving to hold to that. I really am upset that I can't remember my word for the year. And I believe it's just because I'm extremely discombobulated. I wasn't really prepared to do any of this today, but I wanted to stick to our schedule. And so I'm just kind of winging it. So you get what you get today, I guess, folks. I'm sorry about that. But 
I want to thank you guys for joining me today. The last thing I will mention is what I am wearing. So I am wearing my Veronica sweater that I knit about three or four years ago. And um, it's knit out of this beautiful variegated worsted weight superwash wool that I've forgotten the name of all of a sudden, even though I know the name of it. See, I can't even remember these things. So let's see here. So my Veronica... No, no, not library, in my projects. I wanna to go to my projects. So my Veronica, I renamed as Mushroom Hunting Cardi. I finished it back in September 23rd of 2017. And I knit this out of dragonfly fibers in the Traveler base. And the colorway is Mushroom Hunting. So there you go. This was back in my stage where I really liked the earth tones. So, plus I love mushrooms, so I probably would still buy it now just based on the name alone. But it's a very interesting construction. And I've never really known if I liked it or not. Um, nope. I'm trying to find... Well, for heaven's sakes, Emily. I want to go to the the screen and show you, but... That's what that looks like. Now, so um, let's see if it shows other pictures. Okay, so there you go. So it's a very interesting construction in that the what you, what you might think of the majority of the sweater is actually the top part, not the body of the sweater. So the sleeves are actually really far down. So you've got a lot of fabric up here and very little fabric below the sleeves which the sleeves are not even really sleeves, they're just openings. Like, they're not knit in any way. And it's knit from wing to wing, from side to side. It's really cool. Um, and it's got these beautiful ridges. So it's knit flat in stocking net with ridges of pearl interspersed throughout. And it's got this beautiful cowl neck, not cowl neck, grandpa style cowl co collar. And I really like it but I don't know that it looks great on me. And, but then again, I don't know that I really care. Um, it's very voluminous. It makes me feel very large when I'm wearing it. it makes me feel kind of, you know, chunky. Um, and you know, when you're already a little overweight, you don't really like that feeling, but at the same time, it's so comfortable. And look how it sits on my shoulders. It's almost as if it was What do they call those things? But they just have a head opening. And oh, I just can't remember. Not a capelet. Can't remember. I just, my thoughts, guys. My thoughts today. But anyway, I, I like it, but I don't know if I'm going to keep it. Oh, who am I kidding? I think I'm going to keep it. Because I was thinking about ripping it out and making it into a campfire cardi. But I told myself I needed to wear it for a week first to see how I felt about it after wearing it for a week. And so far, I've really liked it. It's kept me pretty warm without overheating me with my arms. I'm one of those people that gets really cold after I eat. And so I'm always putting on a cardigan or a sweater after I eat a meal. And today, Jeremy made a sandwiches for lunch and I immediately went and just put this bad boy on. And it was just enough without overheating me to keep me nice and cozy. So I really like that. So that's what I'm wearing today. I'm not going to talk about what's on my needles because that's next time when I meet up with Steph. But until then, guys, remember that life happens between knits and pearls. Take care. Bye, guys.